Good morning and welcome to Children's Church. Today we are celebrating dads and what a great day we are going to have. We asked some of your friends to tell us about their dad and let's have a look at what they say. What is Father's Day? A day where you get to honor your daddy. Father's Day is a special day to celebrate how special my father is. When fathers get um to presents and and they get and they have some Sunday school. What's your favorite thing to do with daddy? Have a family fight. What's a family fight? We we grab anything that we can find and then we throw it at each other or hit each other with it. <laughs> what like what kind of things? Cushions sometimes cardboard 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 tubes. I like it when my father takes me out to ride my bike. I love playing football with my dad and and he teaches me how to play football and and I love cycling with my dad. Uh, and play with him with toys? Play him with toys? And go to awesome walls. Playing with me and I like jumping ping on the trampoline with him. Go out and cycle with him on the back. You like to do anything else? And um, play with him and give him hugs and kisses. What do you like about your daddy? Um, 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 um hugging him? Hugging him? He gets me toys. He gets you toys. What I like about my father is that he's a hard worker and he works till early in the morning. And my dad always takes me out to play on my bike. <laughs> and where is daddy taking you on holidays? Um, camping. Camping. And what's your other favourite thing to do with Daddy? And go to the swimming pool. Oh, do you know he loves you? And I and I know he loves me. And I know he loves me because I'm his son. Loves me because he loves me. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he reads me books and plays me and gives me hugs and kisses. He he provides my every need. I know that my father loves me because he takes care of my everyday needs. He hugs me and kisses me and loves me and uh, just helps me with anything. Do you love your daddy? Yeah. Yeah. So we say happy Father's Day. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. How much do you love Daddy? This much. How much? This much. I love you. Happy Father's Day. Blow my kiss. This is a true story that happened back in 1988 in a place called Armenia. There was a father and mother who had a little boy named Armand. Now Armand went to school and on this particular day, there had been an earthquake. After the earthquake, the father ran to the school and when he got there, he found the school had collapsed. Though it seemed hopeless, the father began lifting up the rock, searching for his son. Other parents came and they only wailed and cried, saying, my son, my son, or my daughter. And yet nobody volunteered. Nobody would help our man's father look. But our man's dad, he would not give up. He'd often told his son, no matter what, I will always be there for you. With strength and courage beyond himself, the father courageously searched alone. He searched all through that night, all the way to the next evening until he lifted up a huge rock and he could hear faintly, help! As he heaved away the rocks, he could hear voices. He said, Armand, Armand! 
And Armand responded. He said, Dad, it's me. I told the others in the class that no matter what, if you were alive, you would find me. Armand's dad said, come son, let me help you out. But Armand said, no, help the other children first. Let them get out. So Armand's dad helped the other children to get out. And Armand said, I knew, I knew you would find me. I knew no matter what, if you were alive, you would find me. And I told the other children not to be afraid and not to worry. Now the other kids, they were all hungry. They were thirsty and they were tired, but they were all alive. The father had not given up and our man knew his father would not give up. Did you know God is just like that father in the story and we are like the son, our man? You see, because of our sin, we are separated from God and need to be rescued. Without God, we have no hope of spending eternity in heaven with him. Sin is anything we do that breaks God's law. And sin is what separates us from God. In the Bible, in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And another verse says, For the wages of sin is death. Wages is the payment. The price of our sin is death. Our sin has separated us from God. But there is another verse some children quoted last week. It was John 3.16. If you know the verse, would you say it along with me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you so much. And he wants to save you. Did you know when I was 11 years old, I asked Jesus to come into my heart and to save me. Maybe some of you watching are also 11, or maybe you're older, or maybe you're younger. Whatever age you are, God wants to save you. You can have a relationship with God by believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again. Once you believe by faith that Jesus paid the price for your sins, you become a child of God and He is your Heavenly Father. If you would like to know more about how God can become your Heavenly Father, talk to your parents or call Pastor. I know that they would love to share with you how you too can be saved and show you what the Bible says. As you go about your day to day, Remember that God wants us to love our Father. Think about some ways you can show Him your love. Today is Father's Day, and maybe you can think of something you can do today to show your dad you love him. You can be thinking about that as we listen to our story about him from the Bible this morning. Sing with us. Sing Now it's time for our Bible lesson. If you have a Bible, turn to Judges chapter 4. Last week, we learned about Ehud, a left-handed man who hid a dagger on his right thigh under his clothes and used it to kill a very fat king, Eglon, who had been oppressing the children of Israel for 18 years. 
after Ehud, God sent another deliverer named Shamgar. He fought against the Philistines and killed 600 of them with an ox goad, or a long stick with a pointed end, kind of like a spear. But what do you think happened next? Can you guess? If you said that God's people abandoned him again, then you're correct. God's people chose to serve other gods, which of course are no gods at all. They call themselves gods, but they don't hear your prayers. They call themselves gods, yet they're not able to deliver like God can. We have also learned what happens if we choose to abandon God and his ways. Yes, that always brings that person into bondage. This doesn't happen straight away, but over time, the cords of sin tighten their grip. Soon the people of Israel found themselves under the power of Jabin, the king of Canaan. For 20 years, King Jabin ruled over Israel and made their lives very bitter. A man named Sisera was the captain of Jabin's army. It was a mighty army with 900 chariots of iron that could deal with the children of Israel if they ever tried to rebel. When the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, he called a man named Barak. God said to gather together 10,000 men out of the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun and go to Mount Tabor. God said also that it would be near here by a big river named the river Kishon, that he would fight against Jabin's mighty army and that God would help him to win. But Barak was afraid and didn't want to go. Do you think he was afraid of Jabin's mighty army? How about you? If God called you to fight against King Jabin, would you go? God often calls us to do impossible things, but the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Well, there was a woman named Deborah living in Mount Ephraim, who judged Israel in those days. She would sit under a palm tree and the people would go to her for advice. She would also settle arguments people had by using God's law as her guide. Deborah sent and called for Barak, and when he came up she said, Has the Lord God of Israel not commanded you? Didn't he say for you to gather 10,000 men out of the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun and go to Mount Tabor, and that you would meet Sisera the captain of Jamin's army by the river? with his chariots and all his men? God says he will deliver Sisera into your hand. Barak replied, If you go with me, then I'll go. But if not, I won't go. Of course I'll go, said Deborah. But God will give the honor of defeating Sisera to another person. He will give the victory to a woman. Now the Kenites told Sisera that Barak had gone up to Mount Tabor with 10,000 men, and Sisera gathered together his army and the 900 chariots he had and went to the river Kishon, as the Lord had said. Deborah said to Barak, Go and fight Sisera, for the Lord has gone out before you and delivered him into your hand. Sisera's army was put to the worst by Barak and his men, and they chased the army and the chariots and slew them with the edge of the sword. But, Sisera got off his chariot while Barak wasn't looking and ran away. Barak kept pursuing the army and smote them all. Meanwhile, Sisera came by a woman named Jael, and she told him that he could hide in her tent. When he went in, he was thirsty and asked for water. Jael gave him some milk. She went and got a blanket, and just before he hid underneath, he said, that she should go and wait outside, and if anyone asked if he was inside, to say no. Jael agreed and covered him with the blanket. Sisera was very tired from fighting all day and running away from Barak and his army, and soon he fell fast asleep. When Jael noticed, she found a hammer and a spare tent peg. Slowly, she tiptoed over to where Sisera was hiding. 
gently, she put the tent peg against the side of his head. Then she banged it with a hammer into his head, killing him instantly. She went out and found Barak looking for Sisera. Come, she said, and I will show you the man you're looking for. When Barak went in, he found Sisera dead with the tent peg in his head. Just as God had said, the honor of defeating Sisera and his army went to jail instead of Barak. Nevertheless, Deborah and Barak sang with joy that day because the people were finally free after 20 long years of bondage. God's people went on to get rid of King Jabin altogether and the land had rest 40 years.